Hello friends, in this lecture we shall discuss a case study on calculation of working capital. We are provided the following information relating to firm ABC. Sales in the previous year 800 lakhs, projected sales next year 1000 lakh that is 10 crore raw material consumption to sales ratio 60% wages direct expenses to sales ratio 12% fixed overheads to sales ratio 10% raw material storage required for 2 months conversion period 15 days finished goods holding 1 month credit allowed to buyers means customer of the firm two months credit available from suppliers one month wages fixed overheads payable on a monthly basis cash in hand or with the bank 10 lakh margin on working capital it will be 20 percent based on this information we are to calculate number one working capital number two amount of working capital limit third operating cycle period while making these calculation we also should take note of this note cost of production and cost of sales may be taken at the same level in the absence of opening and closing stock since we are not provided the information relating to opening stock and closing stocks hence we have been asked to take the value of cost of production and value of cost of sales at the same level. Friends, first of all, what is meant by working capital? Working capital means the amount of current assets required by a business firm to achieve the required sales target. Here, sales target is 10 crore. What is the amount of current assets required? These current assets will be in the form of raw material, in the form of stock in process, finished goods, debtors, etc. Let us start with the calculation. So first of all, we shall take the projected annual sale. It is already given here. For the purpose of calculation of working capital, the past year sale will not be taken into consideration. Projected sale, future year sale will be taken into consideration which should be realistic. How much raw material is required for this? Raw material consumption to sales ratio is 60%. Hence, 60% of this projected sale that is rupees 1000 lakh. 600 lakh is the amount of raw material to be consumed in a period of one year. What is going to be the cost of production or cost of sales? Although cost of production and cost of sales are different, but here we have been asked that treat them at one level. Cost of production will include not only raw material consumption, but also the direct expenses like wages, like power and fuel and other manufacturing expenses. So 60% plus 12% that is the cost of production and also cost of sale for the purpose of this example. 72% of 1000 it is a 750. The next thing we have to calculate is amount of wages or direct expenses. Wages and direct expenses, they are 12% of the projected sale. Hence, 12% of 1000, it is 120. Then fixed overheads, fixed overheads are 10% of the sales. So 10% of 1100 is amount of fixed overheads. Fixed overheads include your office expenses, administrative expenses, selling expenses, marketing expenses, depreciation etc. 
Now, after calculation of these expenses, we shall now start calculation of raw material holding, stock in process holding and finished goods holding. First of all, raw material, how much it will be held? Raw material storage period is 2 months. Raw material is directly related to purchase. So, equal to 2 months purchase, raw material is required. Total raw material consumption will be 600. This means this much raw material will be purchased over one year period. And for one month, it will be 50 lakh. 600 divided by 12. So, it will be 50 lakh. And for two months, what will be the holding amount? So, it will be 100. Remember, when we have to calculate the raw material amount, it will be with reference to raw material purchase. So, this is raw material consumption or raw material purchase. 600 is annual. Per month, it becomes 50. For two months, this is the amount of raw material which will be held by this firm. 15 days stock in process. Conversion period is 15 days. Raw material put into machines, converted into finished goods, it takes 15 days. So 15 days stock in process. How it will be taken? Stock in process and finished goods. These will be calculated with reference to cost of production. Otherwise, stock in process is calculated with reference to cost of production and finished goods, these are calculated with reference to cost of sales. But here in our example, cost of sales and cost of production is same. Hence, these both shall be calculated with reference to cost of production. So, cost of sales and cost of production is 720 for the whole year. For one month, it will be 60. 720 divided by 12. And it is required only for 15 days. So 60, it is for one month, for half month, it will be 30. So stock and process value shall be 30. Now value of finished goods. One month finished goods holding. We are given here, it will be held for one month. So it is with reference to cost of production. Cost of production is 720. For one month, it is going to be 60. So again, for one month, it will be 60. Then amount of debtors means credit allowed to buyers of our products. Two months credit will be provided. So two months debtors will be. So calculation of debtors, it will be with reference to annual sales. Annual sale is 1000 lakh. 1000 lakh divided by 12, it will give us monthly sale. Multiplied with 2, it will give us the amount of outstanding debtors. Now, cash in hand, that is also part of working capital. So, cash in hand for meeting various expenses etc., it is 10 lakh. So, we directly take it 10. And this is the total working capital required, 367. <laughs> that was answer to our first question. What is amount of working capital needed to achieve sales of 10 crore? And based on these expenses, based on these holding periods, this is the amount of current asset that is working capital required by this firm. Now, how to finance this? A part of this will be financed out of the creditors. It says credit available from suppliers. It is one month. So credit available is on purchase of raw material. And raw material purchase is 600 for one year. For one month, it will be 50. Hence, the amount of credit shall be 50. <laughs> then some credit is available on expenses also, services also. The wages are paid after one month. These fixed overheads, the administrative expenses, the selling expenses, these are also paid on a monthly basis. Hence, one month is credit is available here also. So, total such expenses are 120 plus 100. So, 220 is total amount of such expenses. 
220 is for one year, for one month we can calculate it will be roughly 18. So we have rounded this, it will be roughly 18. This is the finance which is available from outside. Now this means what is the amount of gap called working capital gap? 367 minus 50 and 18. This is the working capital gap 299. Now this 299 it will be funded by net working capital that is margin on working capital and bank limit. Margin on working capital we have to calculate at 20%. So let us now calculate the margin. 20% margin on working capital. This is amount of working capital. On this 20% margin is to be kept. So roughly it is 73. And what remains is the bank limit. So this is working capital gap. Out of this, this is the amount of margin which this borrower will bring and this is the amount of bank limit. Hence we can see this 367, it has been financed by creditors, by expenses, by working capital margin and by bank limit. The total of these four, creditors, credit on expenses, margin on working capital and bank limit it should be equal to total working capital required. So we were to calculate the amount of working capital limit. This is what we have calculated. Now we are to calculate, it, calculate operating cycle period. So operating cycle period includes the period for raw material, conversion period. So raw material period is two months. Conversion period is only 15 days. Finished goods holding period is one month. And credit allowed to buyers is two months. Hence the total period it is five and a half months. In this case the operating cycle period is five and a half months. Friends as we see the amount of limit here is 226 only. <coughs> When amount of limit is 226, it should have been calculated according to turnover method of NIAC committee. That is minimum working capital 20% of this projected sale. But in this case, we cannot use the NIAC committee method. Because NIAC committee method says if requirement is more than 20% of projected sale, in other words, we can also say if operating cycle period is more than three months, then we have to make these calculations. Since here the operating cycle period is more than three months, hence that 20% formula cannot be used for this purpose. So this is a note, turnover method cannot be used because operating cycle period is greater than three months. So that turnover method is used only in those cases where operating cycle period is up to three months. Well friends, in this lecture we have covered a number of concepts and number of calculations have been made. You can watch the video again and again to understand all these concepts. I am sure the contents of the video will be very very useful for you. Thank you.